Here's something that causes a lot of confusion in home studios, recording levels and monitoring balance. This is one of those topics that can make or break a session, especially for beginners, I see it come up all the time. In fact, a subscriber on YouTube recently left a comment on one of my YouTube videos explaining that they were trying to record bass guitar with a Scarlett interface using the auto gain setting. But no matter what they did, the bass was barely audible in their session. It sounded like the performance was getting lost even though the interface was technically doing its job. Now this is a really common issue and it's one that's easy to fix once you understand what's actually happening under the hood. The problem isn't usually your interface or your instrument. It's what you're monitoring against. If you're trying to record along a, to a mastered song or instrument, you have to understand that you're working against a wall of compression, limiting, and sonic density. These tracks that you're playing to are finished. They've already been pushed out for commercial loudness, often hitting as high as like negative nine or negative eight LUFS, and that leaves almost no room for your raw, unprocessed signal to cut through in a headphone mix. The first fix is the most obvious one, that you need to turn those mastered tracks down. So it's very easy, when you import a reference track or a demo into your DAW like Studio One, the first thing you should do is take the fader for that reference and turn it down to at least 6, maybe even negative 12 dB. Give your input some breathing room, because your bass, your vocals, your guitar, they're going to be sitting around negative 18 and negative 12 dB FS on the input meter, which is exactly where you want them to be clean, distortion-free when recording. But if you're comparing that to something that's already been brick-walled at 0 dB with no headroom left, your performance is going to feel tiny by comparison. That's not because it's too quiet, it's because the playback track is simply too loud. Understanding this difference between recording levels and monitoring levels is crucial. Your input gain, which is the level that you're recording at, it should stay low. Your monitoring fader, the level you're listening at, that can be as loud as you need it to be. And Studio One makes it really easy to control both of those independently. Let's break down a few key terms so we're all on the same page. First up is dBFS. That stands for decibels relative to full scale. It's the standard unit of measurement in digital audio, and it's the scale that tops out at zero. That's your ceiling. You never want to hit or try to exceed 0 dBFS because that's where clipping and digital distortion live, not the good kind of distortion either. Everything you record should sit well below that, usually around negative 18 or negative 12 dBFS on average, with peaks maybe hitting negative 6 or so. That range keeps your signal strong and safe. It gives you plenty of headroom for mixing later on. Next, let's talk about RMS and LUFS. RMS stands for root mean square. It's a way of measuring the average loudness of your audio. It's a more useful tool than peak when it comes to judging how something will feel in your mix. LUFS, or loudness units full scale, LUFS, is the modern evolution of RMS. It's what Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube all use to normalize volume. And just like RMS, LUFs will measure the perceived loudness, not just how tall a waveform is, but how loud it sounds to the human ear. When you're recording, your raw tracks aren't going to be anywhere near the LUFs level of a mastered mix, and that's by design. That's why lowering the playback track is so important. You have to level the playing field during tracking. And finally, there's a VU meter. You might have seen these old school meters with a swinging needle. They're not obsolete. In fact, they're incredibly useful. So VU meters respond more slowly than digital peak meters, and they show you that average energy of your signal. An analog gear zero VU typically equals negative 18 dBFS in the digital world. So when you see that needle hovering around zero, that's a good sign you've got a healthy signal. You're not clipping and you're not recording too soft. It's the Goldilocks zone. If you're not using a VU meter plugin in Studio One, I recommend that you grab one. There are some great free options out there, and they make it easier to dial in your input gain without overthinking it too much. VU meters are great because they're not as quick to respond. They're much closer to RMS than peak value. I personally love any piece of gear or plugin that has a VU meter on it. Now let's get practical. Here's a workflow I recommend every time you start a new session. First, import any of those mastered tracks or demos that you'll be recording over. Pull their faders down by at least 10 dB right away. Second, set your interface gain so that your input channel is averaging around negative 18 dB FS, peaking no higher than negative 6. You can do this by watching the input meters in Studio One's mixer. Just make sure you have your input channels visible. 
Third, use the fader on your track to bring up the monitoring level of your instrument or vocal. This won't affect the recorded audio, it just affects what you hear. If you're still having trouble hearing yourself, solo your input channel and get comfortable with the tone before you start recording. And lastly, if your interface supports direct monitoring, use that. It eliminate that latency and gives you more immediate sound in your headphones. Now, if you're layering multiple parts, like tracking bass after a full drum or synth arrangement, the same principle applies. Those finished or semi-finished tracks can easily overpower anything new you try to add unless you actively make space. And this is something a lot of people miss. We want that energy of a full song, so we leave everything loud while we're tracking. But that just makes it harder to play or sing with confidence. Your performance will suffer if you can't hear yourself. And when you end up turning up the gain on your input, that's when you start getting all that noise, distortion, and uneven recordings. So don't be afraid to strip your monitor mix back. You need to drop the drums down, mute the pads maybe, lower that reverb return, let your new part shine when you're recording it. Key point here is recording isn't the same as mixing. When you're tracking, you're not building a final product. You're just capturing something with clarity and intention. That means monitoring should be tailored for performance, not for perfection. So if you've been struggling to hear yourself when you're recording in Studio One or whatever DAW, especially over a mastered track, the answer is simple. Turn the playback track down, not the performer up. Your recordings will sound better and you'll feel more confident every time you press record. <laughs>